Welcome back, Floater Gang. Today we're going to be talking about the off-season blueprint, starting off with the Cavs. I'll start off with my trade, and then we'll move on and see what y'all think. Uh, Desmond Bain for Donovan Mitchell. Straight up? Straight up. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Definitely not what I was expecting. Um, I like it. I didn't say I did. Donovan Mitchell is better than Desmond Bain, without a doubt. Well, but it's Bain's supposed to be like the thing. No, I mean, no, when the Grizzlies – it Bain's depends a better, better fit for the Cavs. Yeah, better. yeah, so fit wise is where this trade comes down to. If we're talking about talent, Donovan I don't know Mitchell, if I like Donovan to the Grizzlies, but Donovan is better. But we do have something to keep in mind that Desmond Bain did have a 45 point playoff game or something, something like that. Did he not? Donovan Mitchell had a 50 point playoff game. So. Well, he was also the number one option. Desmond Bain did this as the number two option. Mm-hmm. Well, so here's the thing talent wise, Grizzlies are winning the trade. And I think it, the fact that you have to factor in talent and contract. Um, but I don't think it's going to be that. It's not going to be the same fit for them, though. It's not. I don't think it's going to work out for them either. But sometimes you have Moran. They might want star power, and I think they could actually. As a Grizzlies fan, I think this could be really interesting. You're a fan of like every team. Yeah, we all might are. Not well, be. Me yeah. and him both are. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, let me finish my thought real quick. So, strictly <laughs> talent wise, it it's definitely lot. Lopsided with the Grizzlies, uh, in terms of it's what sided. Uh, 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 Laugh at that. <laughs> me... <laughs> Here we go. So it's lopsided for the Grizzlies. Don Mitchell's better. Desmond Bain fits, I think, for both well, teams so, better. So here's the thing. Do the the Grizzlies on paper get significantly better? It, the question is, does the Jaw Donovan Mitchell backcourt pairing work? That's what I'm worried about. So, and let me talk about that. <laughs> Desmond Bain is significant. Is a significant. I want to say so. he's a be- he's a much better fit uh, with Derek Garland and Just the rest in, of that yeah. core. You know, he he can play off ball. The question is, it, do they have all the talent to go where they want to go with that? Because they don't have like the one alpha talent that could take them over the top in that scenario. But okay. I think that's what's beautiful about what they would get with that. If like, you know uh, Garland can score, there's... he can play make. Bain can definitely score. Hopefully, uh, in this scenario, you get rid of Allen too, and then you have Mobley develop into the role that he needs to be, and then you have your role players like Okoro, Niang, Struess. I think it could actually work out really well. I still think in the NBA you just need the guy. You need they have the Damian guy. Jones. Uh, he's a free if they agent. resign him. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, he's going to have tons of suitors. Um. Yeah, so you, I I think for the Cavs it's still kind of like a linear. I think move. it's a step. I think it's a step up. It's a step up. We saw them play it's so a step well up. against the Boston Celtics, who some people claim are the best team in basketball. No, but it's the, also the Celtics who just okay. They didn't okay. have to down to their but, well, either way, there's still the Celtics, and they perform. They performed, and Garland, fact, fact, fact. After better. a year of being in that role, would even be better than we saw him. He would be even better, especially with a guy like Desmond Bain that would do the right part of taking pressure off of Don, uh, off of, off of Dar- Darius, 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 Darius when it's necessary. He would take away that pressure and provide the space and also ball support, but still letting the offense run through Garland. And we know he would only look better for a team that already looked particularly good. And also, now keep in mind another part here is. What I would do, I would still trade Jared Allen after this part. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was just to surround the team with what they And the person I would like to add, but money probably would not work at all, is Jared Allen for Gigi Jackson. You get uh, Evan Mobley into, I think, a center role. Gigi Jackson at power forward. They are both very mobile uh, bigs. They can score. I, I do And like they that. do have spacing. But, you know, money-wise, I don't think it would work. So figure something out. I mean, I, I think, like, if you're the Grizzlies, you throw in, like, Brandon Clark. Like for money reasons, yeah. I mean, um, obviously, and, and like Con- Conchar, or I don't know. I like, didn't look at the money, so I don't know what they would need to do. With, what else? I would freaking love Jared Allen. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially since they lost Adams, so they would they need, need, a, they need a replacement for Jared, that. Jared I don't Jackson think can. Well, I don't think Brandon Clark is going to be that starting. I love Brandon Clark, but I think he's he's six he six rides off the bench. And you don't I want think they also have. Uh, they also have nine to trade, uh, pick nine. Oh, uh, so I mean, or so they could either like. Sure. I don't think Klingon's going to fall to them, but mm. I mean, maybe you draft ID. I don't know if he goes that high. I don't know if you would trade um, the heat either. Heat. I always said I uh and then or you could use pick nine to trade for like a Jerry Allen or something. Mm-hmm. Um but for the Cavs again, I, I think I mean you're kind of in a tricky position anyway. You traded for Donovan Mitchell too soon, or you traded for a star too soon, and now you're kind of in a position where you're like You lost have, too much. Yeah, so let's backtrack. But they have no picks. And keep exactly that's why it's beautiful with Desmond too. If you if you trade Donovan, if, if you trade Darius right now in the situation they're at, they are still in a contend. He loves Darius. Darius. <laughs> if they trade Darius Garland, uh, and keep Donovan, they're still in a situation where they need to be a contending type of looking team. If they keep Darius, they can take this next year, look great, hopefully contend, but the pressure is not there. So if you got a different man who is still young. If you get those guys and you get a draft pick, you have that one still a year. Evan Mobley still has a lot of time. And he's young. A lot of time those contracts, just the contracts themselves look great and the time. And they will. We we saw them, guys. We we just watched the playoffs against, again, the Celtics, who we don't trust. But it's still a playoff game against the Boston Celtics. They look good. If they're going to get a Desmond Bain, they will certainly look good. They will certainly win one of those season games. And it will give them continuity. And you take a little bit of this. You allow the team and the guys to get better instead of already having to be at that level. Mm-hmm. And I think, I mean, the question is, can they get to that level where you are like, oh, okay, this team can compete. I think Evan Mobley showed flashes, but even then he's been... Garland before I Donovan think... showed those flashes too, and now you're adding a Bane with that, who's not a ball-dominant guy, which is going to work so well. But yeah. even Garland before the flashes, were we confident he could be the number one guy? I don't know if we were. Donovan? That's why they traded for... Serious. Did I say Donovan? Yes. I thought I said Garland. Either way, that's why they went and got Donovan Mitchell, because I don't think they were totally confident that Darius could beat the number one. I think um, and obviously really Donovan wasn't the right trade. Um and let's let's take it back, because again, this this is the stupid narrative I kinda of want to break about this number one guy. You need talented mm-hmm. guys. So who was number one like, offense again? Who's in the Eastern Conference Finals? By luck or not, by injuries or not, the Indiana Pacers, Tyrese Halliburton. Is the number one guy on that team? I think he is the number. One. He is the number one guy. I think, I think he is the number one guy. But like, let's uh, let's take away this Darius Garland narrative of okay, I, I like, don't think Darius the talent Garland is talent. there. No, he's not. I agree. I, I love Tyrese Halliburton. Like, but in the in the terms of team, I don't think if they do that trade, it's they need to have that exactly. one star player. Because like I said, I think Garland will feel very comfortable. Bain can score, and then you have Mobley too. And if you just kind of have those three guys. They don't have one star. And all the shooters they, they have, have actually be utilized. Yeah, exactly. They are filled with shooters that aren't getting enough shots up because they're not touching the, the ball. Sport. They would all be utilized. And the lob threat, like, could, we saw a girl when he would play, like, just the lob that he's throwing up to a guy like Moby. I, I also just, the offense would it's be It's a team rolling. sport, and they would have a beautiful team with that trade. I, I just don't think that team would still be good enough. And they're not getting picks back, which is also my issue. Well, that's where Jared Allen comes in. Oh. But how many picks are you getting for Jared Allen? All right. I think we beat the. According person. to my trade, they're going to get two first rounders. So I'm not in love with this trade, and I don't know if you're going to love it either. We're moving on. I just said this trade. I mean, I'm. Just... Are you? Are your thoughts done with this? Done? No. All right, let's hear some more. Oh, well, now y'all threw me off for that. You look like you just <laughs> woke up. <laughs> he does. All right, go ahead. So I have Allen to OKC. For Giddy, Kenny Hustle, and two first rounders. I. Kenrich Williams. Say it again. Internet boy. Jared Allen for Giddy, Kenrich Williams, and two first rounders. A first rounder this year and a first rounder next year. Hell no. I don't think I'd do that if I'm either team. I don't mean, I mean, you have 100 fans, but like Jared Allen's not worth two first rounders. And yeah, those two players. Yeah, um, and, and if you're the Cavs, fan, I'm never doing that. Oh yeah, there you go. 
Um, <laughs> that is the stupidest trade ever. Well, so I don't think I picks don't are great. You're not getting players in return. Well, so that's the thing. If you're the Cavs, I think two first round picks is nice. It's still not a haul in terms of like you're like replenishing your. I mean, it depends on the picks, I guess. So OKC has tons of valuable picks. Um, so maybe if you get like one of those Rockets first or one of those Clippers first, that could be valuable in a couple of years. But um, and but like like Josh Giddy, I don't think like the problem with Josh Giddy right now is like they have two sub. They have two elite ball handlers, and then Josh Giddy is subjected to be a third guy, and that's not really his role. He needs to have the ball in his hands, and then that would be the same thing on the Cavs. But I think he would be a good backup guard for them. I mean, yeah, if you're going to use him as a backup guard. But I, that's what if I you're would getting do. a backup guard for Jared Allen, that's just kind of tough, you know. Um, they already have – they're stacked on guards. Well, I, I don't know how – Start on shooting guards. Yeah, I, I don't know how they don't really have that many point, point guards. Guard. Yeah. Well, like right now, guard. they've been bringing up Craig Porter Jr. to a good amount of minutes. Darius Garland gets a lot of minutes. Donovan gets a lot of minutes. Carol well, Donovan Carter. wouldn't be there anymore. Oh, is this assuming Donovan? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't hate the trade in terms of, like, I don't know. I think if you're training Jared Allen, you want, like, a, a wing. Um, well, Kendrick Williams. I mean, he's. I guess he's not necessarily a wing player that you're looking really for. But anything. I, I think he'd be a nice be change of pace. But but to be his point, we were talking about earlier. I think you have a bigger problem with this trade of not getting the right talent. You need. I I think it's a good package, but it would still need talent, some adjustment. Or like in terms of pure talent acquisition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jared Allen. It's just the fit's not all there. Um, and I don't think OKC would say yes. I, I think a trade for Jared Allen could be in the cars for OKC, but I don't know if it's that, that much. Yeah, that's fair. Like I said, I wasn't in love with it, but I did kind of, like you said, it was like kind of good. I don't think it's quite the worst trade back to No. I sure. mean, maybe as a cat. I mean, it's not that bad if you get two first rounders and you saw the talent. Or, oh, that's not bad. But I have another package uh, for Jared Allen. I'm going a little bit in reverse. This is assuming I would have a different Dom package. I would do it in front of this, but I'll just go reverse order and we'll get to that one after. The package for Jared Allen, yeah, it would. There's two different ones I could see. It would be a deal with the Raptors. One is, um, maybe like a straight RJ Bear package if you want to get a kind of a wing player. The problem with RJ Bear, the narrative of his career is consistent scoring and three point shooting. He has been good in Toronto, and he's also his homeland. Um. <laughs> Cleveland ain't too far. Cleveland's the land, though. You're right there. <laughs> so that so could just be straight up Allen for Barrett. Yeah, just Allen for RJ Barrett. Just, just can... about the fit, and it's a young player. Um, agreeable yeah. contract. I think the Raptors could be. Uh, I I actually don't know where the Raptors are going to exactly go, but Allen's young, good enough contract. You saw center Jaka Pertle is not the guy. The... Eighth overall pick for Jakob Pertl. So I yeah, well, I, actually, yeah, now that you met, I don't even know if the. Oh, the guy. I, I think he's, he's not fits. the guy, but they invested capital into him. So I, I think they're committed. I, I mean, mean I but I, I like the trade. To try to Another package. Yeah. For the Raptors, um, Ochai. I'm not gonna pronounce the last name. Agwaji. Yep, that one. <laughs> and uh, 2025 round one pick. See that. That Raptors pick would be pretty valuable. Um, the Raptors pick, and you get also young shooting guard talent. Oh, Ochai was drafted by the Cavs and then traded before he played Jazz. Raptors back to the Cavs. Full circle. Full, Full circle. circle. Uh, Full circle moment. Full circle of life. I like the RJ Barrett trade more. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of tricky to They're figure out nice though. Yeah. RJ ba- or not RJ Barrett, Jared Allen's value. Like. He has a high value. The he only thing, really so he's a really good player. It's just normally you don't see centers be that valuable, like in terms of straight up like trades. You know that's fair. And the other problem too is, I mean, obviously, like he said, depending on what the Raptors do, but I feel like the Raptors already have a lot of bigs too. So I wouldn't necessarily. Well, speak. I mean, but the thing is, like, I mean, those aren't they're not good bigs. Yeah, I guess they're not. Then none of them are really like starter caliber. They have I guess. Jaco Pertl and Chris Boucher. Who else? No, oh, I guess they got. Dante because they lost, they lost Preston. They lost the well. That's true. I thought they had some other. They have Muhammad Gay. He's pretty good. They have some Hawks. Muhammad Gay is on the Hawks, isn't he? Or is it the other the way? Good one. The more good one than the Hawks. They're they both on red teams, and they have like the same name. This is exactly another crappy big guy. But uh, and if you're the Raptors, um, I don't know how much money RJ Barrett makes. I I think yeah, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Makes quite a bit. Yeah. But um. Few mil. 
I and if you're trying to, I don't know if you have to pick between. Better make twenty and million. six million. Okay, it's just like you're gonna have a lot of money. It's about how much I made. Uh, spent on quickly <laughs> and Barrett, and I don't know how like committed you those two are. Like I, I think one in your core could work. I don't know, like. Uh, that's just a lot of money for two guys that I don't know if they're even like number three guys on a really good team, you know. Um, so maybe you would be interested in trading Barrett for Allen and for the Cavs. Like it, it's not like in terms of pure talent, it's not a great value for the Cavs. Mm-hmm. Um, just they're, they're losing a lot of rebound. Yeah, I think Jared Allen is I think a top ten rebounder uh, per game guy. He, he gets. All the rebounds for Cleveland. Um, Mobley we'll hasn't been bad in his absence. Yeah, I, yeah, and move it, you're trying to also develop Evan Mobley into that role, but you also want to get at least a big in return. Yeah, I think a kind of or help. like a big forward. You still have that's like, why I like that. That's why I like the Gigi Jackson trade a lot. Though. I I did like that brainstorm. Actually. I mean, I'll take you. I'll take you in the reverse now of maybe the way you could kind of see this trade work out. So before this would happen, or with this happening also, a Donovan Mitchell trade to none other than the Orlando Magic, who they beat in Game 7. Orlando Magic needing kind of, uh, I think, a little extra scoring, maybe guard play. That would be an elite guard play. That's an only move from the Magic. Um, could be interesting. But to analyze, I, th- I think they could be interested if they if want to take that step. From the Cavs standpoint, now the package you get is an Anthony Black. Could uh, continue to help. Garland on the defensive end, young guy, Jet Howard, another potential lethal shooter, and then a first-round pick for 2024, 2025, and 2026. So one first-rounder for each of the next three seasons. Um, So kind of really getting the Cavs in a situation where they really start to build on that roster and could be looking to make some big kind of a, maybe a, a dip down this next season, I think still looking solid and then could make it make a jump in a year or two after that. So basically the, ma- uh, the Magic the retool for failed uh, last draft class. Already. Uh, I don't want to say failed. No, I mean, I, I, Black I was like good and it. Howard just didn't really play. Yeah. Um, I, I like the trade in, 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 like, in terms of value, um, but rough. also then... Oh, oh, sorry. Also, I completely forgot to mention. So here's the way... This would go. So you would get that package. You would go after one of those packages for Allen with the Raptors. So what do you have now? You have about thirty million in cap space or twenty million in cap space. Mm-hmm. So what can you do now? Maybe you can go get a Tobias Harris for either just a year or two, stay competitive, maybe learn. He's a veteran, or if you can even get him on a much cheaper contract, maybe sign for three or four years. I know Tobias Harris is a really weird target to go oh, after. I use a polarizing guy, but I don't know why. I like his fit. And if you can get him on the right contract, right contract is key. If you can go to Siakam, that'd be great. I don't think you're going to land Siakam with uh, the uh, uh, guys that the really Raptors have roster. also have Kelly Olynyk as a big. That's you true. didn't think about him. That's true. My I apology. knew they did actually. I did think he. Was. He's also a, a countryman. And then if you could further on, if you could also get an Andre Drummond, that would be cool too. Yeah, that's. I don't think it's that, that key. In this modern NBA, and mostly we've seen him actually hold down the fort well enough as a rebound. I, I just think size, like built wide, like he's so good at defense red. anyway. But yeah, but even him, he held in the fort. And he's a good defender. Mobley's stronger. He's yes, a better defender. If you look at this playoffs, Derek Lively killed the dude in the paint. Well, the, yeah, he killed not the not Mobley. Yeah, the the Thunder. Well, yes, but I'm saying Evan Mobley is a skinny guy like Chet Holmgren. He's, he's, he's stronger than Holmgren. And, and I, Mobley I has think... had a lot more time to build up that strength. Yes, and, he's I, gonna, and he uh, has. I think a little, little extra strength will just, help. You know, I don't think Evan defender. Mobley would be well, if you resign, to kid if you resign well. Jones and Thompson. And, and not to mention, again, you also have, at this point, like six first-round picks that you just acquired, and I'm sure one of those or two of those you could try to turn into yeah. a big man. And, and like... If you are like this for the Jazz like and for the Thunder and for whatever other teams that need bigs, you don't have to get like another sh- starter big. You just need another big that you know you can rely on. Yeah, like, that's a why drum, I like Drummond. Yeah, Drummond. Um, I mean, he played good minutes for the Bulls. Like, I like he when he left the Cavs and then went to like the Lakers and he was like unplayable. He's not that same player anymore. He he's improved a lot. I mean, he still has his Drummond moments, like when he tried to catch that lob. <laughs> By Tory Craig, but he is still I, he's a much more valuable role player now than I think he was 
when he signed with that Lakers team? Um, I think it's a good trade value-wise. We're getting two rookies that didn't have a great season. Still young, I understand. Who is the guy? Not Anthony Black, the other guy. Howard. 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 I think replace him with Cole Anthony makes the deal a little more interesting. The money does not work. Money doesn't work. Well, actually, I mean, the money would work. Um, The money would work, but then you have less money for free agents. Yeah. Yeah, but the draft picks are actually really good. If you're looking up uh, or looking at the upcoming uh, high schoolers, seniors, you got Cooper Flagg, Carlos, uh, Carlos Boozer's sons, uh, RJ Harper, or something. DJ uh, Harper. Something Harper. Yeah, Ace Bailey. There, there's, a, there's a high talent. The next draft class is going to be like one of the best in years. Yeah. So, so I'm probably, you're getting a good chance. And also, that's why I like the Raptors deal for Allen. Because just getting draft it's picks and 25 draft. with Ochai. Yeah. The thing is, like, it's 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 a little bit of a tough pill to swallow for Cavs fans who thought they were on top of the world, maybe after Donovan. A lot of people projected them high. And we talked about that. It's a little bit tough to swallow. Okay, we're going to retool, not a rebuild at all. It's a retool. But, uh, all right, let's retool and get, like, get some young guys. We're not going to go after stars right away. And I, that's historically been pretty efficient. It's been a lot more successful generally than trading for superstars trying to build a super team, as we've kind of seen this year. And just like, okay, let's get some picks. Let's get some young guys. Cheap contracts for four years. It's just a great way to build a team. you got cap space. But let's say we don't want to do that. Let's say we do want to go after a big time this season. We hear a lot of Lakers talks. <laughs> this would be a blockbuster oh, deal I with the uh, with the Lakers with a with I most famous that. basketball franchise in the world, arguably Donovan Mitchell and Jared Allen for Anthony Davis and Rui Hachimura. So Anthony Davis, guys, like I want to put this out there. I would love the Davis and Garland fit because you finally get that reliability of a super big guy. That Garland could law feed, and you have this two man play. Mobley learning from Davis, he's being a, around. He's a way better Allen, uh, but the thing with Allen and Mobley was spacing, and they're, again, they're, I don't think. But Davis has a jump shot. Uh, I mean, Allen has a big jump shot at the very. He still Allen has no jump shot. Spots as Jared Allen. Jared Allen's running by the paint. That's exactly the same thing Anthony Davis. Hey, Allen can hit a four foot floater. And Mobley <laughs> also. This is also somewhat banking on. Mobley, let's keep working on your shot. We've seen it there. We've seen him hitting those threes now. This is kind of banking on working on that as well. I just think also, guys, defensive-wise, are you kidding me? Nobody's Davis and the Mobley? Nobody's and let's, say, the let's say we want to play big. You have Rui at small forward. What are you going to do? So I'm... Just with that and then still that offensive threat with those shooters? For Cleveland. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, for Cleveland, I, I think – you absolutely do the trade. Um, I mean, it, even it, if, like, you don't love the fit next to Mowgli, which I, it's better than Allen, at least. Yeah, it is. Um, it, it's just pure talent. You do it. And, and, and even fit-wise, still. Uh, yeah, I, think, I mean, I think with the, Garland, the fit improves. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's just, like, ideal quite. Um, and then Rui's a good player. And then for the Lakers. And he's young. Rui's still young. Yeah. For Lakers, I highly doubt Lakers would trade AD. Yeah, they, they wouldn't. I agree. Uh, another thing is Cleveland. It's great, right? You're replacing Jared Allen. It's awesome. It's just Donovan Mitchell. Who's replacing his spot? It's really tough. You can't play. Well, you're not trying to replace his spot. The whole no, but I mean, he's a decently good guy. You don't want to Karis LeVert in that spot. You do though. No, or the shooters. The Karis LeVert cannot start in that spot. Here's how the offense. He literally did before the whole point of this offense. And he sucked. Yeah, it wasn't. I mean, they were the ninth seed. Like guys, the whole point of this offense is you're missing the point. You're not going to get two star guards. The whole point is yes, move I, I away. You don't need two star guards. Okay, but you just he, need another exactly a Sam a Sam Merrill. The whole point yeah. is guys. The whole point is Merrill is like unplayable. The point of the of this is you you're running your offense through Garland, an elite ball handler, self creator, and career for the players, and Davis, who you can feed in the paint and will draw by in the paint. What else do you want around them? Guys that can shoot the ball. That's exactly what the Cavs needed to do over last offseason, and that's what they did. They will still have Niang, still have Merrill, they will still have a Bruce, Bruce, still have they a Coro. They still have a Coro. They will well, have guys that can shoot. 
He's restricted. restricted though, so hopefully, yeah. yeah, yeah or don't get not. to the back. I mean, but yeah, my point I don't is, think you don't want another star guard, and even if you want another guy, they can create those. I never kind of said a star guard. Hurt. I want a good guard. Who? But like, um, for what fit? To what purpose? I mean, just for what purpose? Consistent, like Craig Porter still... Jr. Okay, okay. They have plenty of guards. No, I don't think that's they not the do, problem. No, I, I, just, I think it is a big problem because it's not. Not the Struce Mitchell is a huge part of that offense. Put Struce in a quarter. You know how inconsistent Struce is. You have, I think, you have one. It, it doesn't. I don't even care about the scoring. You have one ball handler. Yeah. That can really set up. You need just more. So to put Levert there. Uh, but okay, so then that takes away all your bench. Point guard, backup. You have Craig guard. Porter Jr. So, I don't Merrill, think he's a point guard. Yeah, they yeah, are yeah. point guards. They are not guys. Fred Porter Jr. He's starting two point guards. Are you starting two point guards? No, no. It's but point guard shooting ball guard. handling. Okay, so like, they no, can handle the ball. He's not. He, you guys think he's really a high level ball handler? They don't want. Why do they need two why high level ball handlers? Starting line because every team has two high level ball handlers. Mike Conley, Anthony Edwards, uh, the the Pacers have Tyrese Halliburton, Tyrese Halliburton, TJ Nembhard, TJ McConnell, Nembhard. I mean, no, they don't even have to start. I'm just saying. Yeah, well, like, production. And then, like, if you look at like, look, Burn 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 Jr. can handle the ball really well. Levert can. Levert just like I pass. think his goal is score. Except for when he gets like eight assists. Yeah, Levert is a ball for eleven field goals. He's a ball handler. He's a ball handler. He doesn't Struz can handle the ball really well ball. too. Struz is a fine ball handler. Like, but he's not going to bring handlers. the ball up the court. He gets tired of three plays bringing up the court. Like. And like we and I don't understand how what your hate is about Craig Porter Jr. He's a really good ball handler. He doesn't look to play make. He looks to score. Yes, he does. He literally looks That's to play make. Like, and Watch Craig Porter Porter yes, I have. Yes, Craig. Every time I swear I see him. Why do you think? Shot short, throw up a double team. Every leg. time I watch him play, he played twenty minutes, shot like four shots. Yeah. yeah. Craig Porter Jr. is just. I mean, first of all, he's super uh, inexperienced. Super, just he's just green. We and don't uh, know. Like how yeah, he's he green on the court for the team. The other thing you is know, creating. Are we saying, I know what you meant. I know what you're here. saying. Green, yeah, he's green. He's ready to go. No, uh, uh, I know. We everyone knows what we're talking about. Okay. Yeah. I, I just like I don't know. I think you just need another guard, uh, and like that you know is going to be consistent for you. I I don't think it's that ridiculous of a take. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think it's actually ridiculous. it's not ridiculous at all. I don't think it's ridiculous. It's, I think it would be fine to I have. I think y'all are just overblowing. You want the right? I, no, I, think, I think it's think we are overblowing. Because every it, single team has because you don't want to replace Donovan. The, the, the exact point is you have Darius, and we know he can take care of the ball, and he will do just that. And if you have a bunch of shooters, green light shooters, and Anthony Davis in the paint, I I think you're gonna have a you're gonna have an offense, and you're certainly gonna have a defense. And when he's out, what's gonna happen? Darius Garland. When he's out, then you're fucked. Yeah, that's exactly the issue. And you have Levert still, like, yeah, but you have Levert. Levert. That's what happens. If you lose your starting point guard, who's one of your top two players on your team, any team in the league will be a guy that brings up the ball, creates space, creates open shots. Have you ever seen that from Karis Levert or Craig Ford Jr.? Yes. Yes. No, they pass the ball. It doesn't mean he creates openings. He's literally Levert. There's Garland. Have you seen him play? That's why it's such a good point guard. Yeah, yeah well, Gary is one of the best. So you want the all exactly. We're talking about the top two players on the team. Jay McConnell, he creates open shots, doesn't he? Not? Okay, but so the Levert does the exact same thing. No, no but not as consistent or he high do level. He's is a high level, and not consistently. I mean, if he's, he, it's not high, high level, level not consistently. You were mentioning Edwards as being a primary good ball handler for the Timberwolves. Yeah. He is not a playmaker like that, though. Not even close to it. Like he he pass he passes yeah, the ball. He does not make plays for teammates. Okay, yeah, but he, he also passes the ball. Thirty points a game, so I think it's kind of different. he doesn't need to really. Okay, but now we have he, Garland. He creates plays a game. for himself along with others. And Garland we, we will not have that plays. And Garland will do exactly that. And then who's At the Anthony Conley? Edwards level? Yeah, and who's the Mike Conley? And don't say Karis Levert because Karis Levert is not Mike Conley. But here's the thing: but Anthony Edwards isn't the playmaker or the dribbler that Garland is. So you already have that in Garland. Yes, but you're still missing a whole other piece to it. Yeah, Garland doesn't score 30 points a game, so I don't... I who is the Celtics' the, second ball hand? Who is the Knicks' second ball Who are the Celtics? And Drew Holiday. That's true, I guess they have White. Yeah. The Knicks. And then they still have Celtics really elite Jets scorers in Jalen Brown and Jason Taylor. Miles McBride. I mean, yeah, the, the right. Knicks are like... Deuce, whatever. All right. right. Two, uh, two, two. The guys have tied wrong, guys. I think the point is here, I, I agree <laughs> they... 
<laughs> they could definitely <laughs> use another guy, but I personally think, and it sounds like Marvin does too, I think they would certainly be in a very good spot with and, what they would And then, do. like you said, and they still have money. You can get a guard in free agency. Hey, just so we're not... I mean, that's true. I mean, that'd be fine. With it, but just Get so Melton in free agency. There you go. But, Boom. okay, so I'm going to move on to a different possibility. If the Cavs do extend down to Mitchell. I don't know how likely it is that they will. Because even if they extend him, we know... He... Uh, even like even if they do extend it, we saw he doesn't guys like, like Bradley Beal, which is like Scott the very next year. So I don't know how like what he doesn't like the thought of Donovan. Yeah, they can't hear when off. three people are talking at the same time. Okay, we we see it with Bradley. I mean, we see it all the time. Like guys extend and then they want out the year after. It's just like I don't know how viable well, look, it is. At least from what I've heard is I've also heard that Garland and Mobley are going to want out if they extend Donovan. Well, I don't think so. You're gonna. Really, I heard both heard of Mobley. them. I heard Mobley. I don't think Mobley will. In a weird way, it might be in the Cavs. Oh, I mean, I guess Mobley probably depends more on Allen, but yeah, I think Mobley depends more on Allen. But I, I think I, I think I think Mobley's up for an extension, so he would take it. In no, the, without a doubt. In the Cavs' best interest with how old these guys are, it might be in their best interest to extend them regardless, because then they can still trade them. Well, so here's the thing: if you're going to, but like, so if Don, if Darius Garland's going to want out. If they extend Donovan, then you just don't extend Donovan if you think there's a possibility he could also want out, you know, like even after. Um, I mean, there's always a possibility. I mean, Garland could want out after that, too, obviously. I know, but, but then you just live with that because but it's not nearly as likely as you know. that's probably true. Um, but say say Donovan Mitchell just wants to extend and they do it and Do- Darius Garland wants out. I have a trade. Um, and I think it's going to be unpopular to listen. So Darius Garland going to the Washington Wizards. I'm sorry, Darius. Ooh. Um, it's disgusting. I'm not even gonna cry. Yeah. Cavs get Al Kuzma. Oh my goodness. Corey Kispert. Uh, and two a 2024 first round pick, which this year it's like 27. Uh, and then they get Phoenix's 2026 first, which could be valued. Same Drop problem. Me. Who's their back? Who's their next guard guy now? What's up? First well, you're also all, creating cap space. Who's their playmaker starting? Period, yeah. Well, Who's their playmaker, <laughs> period, now? <laughs> the worst. Now you don't even have one? No, 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 no. Oh, and then they signed. That could work. Did the the money, money, I mean, so we saw Don, Don and Mitchell's best stretch of basketball. <laughs> well, how did the money work out? Kuzma it, and all those guys? It literally worked. It's just Kuzma and Kispert. Yeah, and then Kispert. Kispert. Oh, just Kuzma and Kispert? Okay, okay. Because Don's getting paid a bag. Yeah. Uh, he's getting paid a lot. Anyway, more than Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, I know. Uh, Donovan Mitchell's best stretch of basketball was when he was the point guard and he had to play make. Uh, he averaged something like nine assists per game. Um, and then, yes, you need another guard in this situation. I'm not saying you don't. Um, but you're addressing the wing situation, you're addressing the shooting situation. Um, what suit? The, the thing is, the so shooting they sucked at shooting the playoffs. And this is, whether you liked it or not, they sucked at it. Okay, and I was going to get right to that point. The problem is, you not that they don't have it. Consistent. The problem is, they don't use it. That's exactly the problem. The problem is, Donovan, their offense is ass. Is this not fixing that issue. situation here? No. Yeah, they no. Darius. Oh, wait, they got rid of Darius. That's what I'm saying. No, no, no. Be, they, the thing is, they have shooting on their team. They didn't use it. The problem that they're not using it is a whole different problem. But no, the best stretch of basketball. The Cavs was when it was Donovan Mitchell as the point guard. Everyone shot better. Oh. Jared Allen played better. Donovan played better. And I think if you could rekindle that possibility. But it's the same if you reverse it with them keeping Garland and getting rid of Donovan. I know, but I think Darius Garland is just better than – I mean, uh, Donovan Mitchell is just better than Darius Garland. But if you're, better, better, if you're the Cavs, aren't you looking – He's a better player? one-on-one player. Let's get something clear. One-on-one player does not make you a better basketball player. It's because you'd win on a one-on-one matchup against 90, 90% that, of the league. That is – Okay, but just because he's a better one v one player doesn't also mean he's a better basketball player. He scores Obviously better. Not. I think he's a great. He's a good playmaker when he really and he does play makes. But he was a playoff he, star. He does. Okay, but he did when he had to. Not in the playoffs. When didn't. Darius Garland was out, not and in I the think playoffs he didn't. Okay, let me finish my sentence. All right, it's if they can get, rekindle that, but uh, formula. That's a. In my opinion, that's not how you're the dog of plays. He never had. When the it moment was last played, when he had to. In my opinion, listen, 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 you're no, I'm the one trying to talk right now. And listen, you guys didn't interrupt me. I just thought you finished. I, I wasn't. In finished. the last minute, or in the playoffs, or the last minute, anytime the game gets tough and it matters, he does. Never had. And he makes shots as well. Okay, but the, it, it gets risky, bro. And guys cut harder, they play harder, they shoot better when they know they're going to get the ball. 
I like I don't think Donovan Mitchell is just this black hole on offense. I think you guys <laughs> black hole on offense, but it's about this is the highest level of basketball. You better figure out how to play right. I th- and I think he absolutely can when he has to, and All he's right. showed it. So you think the team of Jared Allen, uh, Mobley, Kispert, Kuzma, and Donovan is the go-to team? I don't that think I, I think the Cavs are kind of screwed anyway. Exactly. So in my opinion, why I think they should keep Garland is he's a better playmaker, and that way they can look more for the future. If you keep Donovan, I mean, he is still pretty young, but you're more of trying to go for let's win now. To so whereas if you go with Garland and Mobley, you're doing the steal. You're kind of going more for picks. Why are you going for kids pretty cool? Like, what the fuck do you want? Well, the Wizards wouldn't give up. But, well, then don't make this deal. That's what I'm saying. You're not winning with this rock. You're not going you're into not the winning playoffs. Any of the rocks. But you're. But you're at not, least you're not going to playoffs after just coming off of Darius Garland. You're trading Garland, and now you're going in there with Kuzma and Kisper and saying, "Damn, I like our odds this year. I think we're better." You just got worse. You did not get better. Well, I so also you're getting the picks that you could potentially use for trade. You're cleaning up a little bit of cap space as well, and then at the end of the day, you're screwed anyway. How, well, so to make it better but, deal. So make it better by like, the younger deal. guys like Garland. Or long term, exactly. You're not saying they should do any of this. I think they should trade everyone. If I'm being honest, except Mobley. It's I just, think they should. I think they should focus on keeping Garland and Mobley. I, I, I think that should I be their two co- main focuses. I think you've never seen Garland play before Donovan Mitchell. That dude had a 50 point game. Okay, he I, knows how to play make. Yeah. You get top tier playmaker. He, right he was developing he literally score. into a, a like a I, all-star I caliber I, player. I don't know what else he wants. I don't. And he was just projecting higher. He his, just it was completely broken the Garland. moment Don was stepped in the building. Yeah, I am not saying Darius Garland's a bad player. He can't be the best player on your team. And at the end of the day, you need a best player on your team. They made the playoffs when he was the best no, player. No, they you need did. a good team. Yes, they, did. they literally they did. did not they have did not. a play in. They did not. They did not make it. If they like, made the play in. The they moment. also did not have a, the, the right roster. Like I said, yeah, he was young. Like, give him time, and he was developing. And he was playing. So good, like that's what you did with Halliburton, and then you get another guy like Siaka. I think get right if the Cavs around, wouldn't have like, that trade, I think they'd be in a very similar spot that they are now in terms of seeding and ranking, but they'd be in a brighter spot because they would have everything. And let's so talk high. about everybody. Yeah, they would have Star- Larry Martin. Exactly, not- and they would have picks still. I I so am also, completely on board with. No, saying, I'm not saying you're not. Stick, I'm just saying in uh, general, like the Cavs, they wouldn't have made that trade. They would. They look beautiful right now. I think at this point, though, you just don't have a ton of options, and if you're just trying to rekindle like and the hope you can't. i don't think you can do anything well i think you have to rekindle hope with keeping the young that you have and going off that because like you said you're hoping to rekindle it with donovan mitchell you don't know like if you're gonna you rekindle four, if you have five first round draft pick you have golden on a four-year contract still and mobley and you have four or five first round draft picks and a few extra young guys like it's a pretty damn good situation. I mean, those draft picks are nice movie. until you have to actually draft. And yeah, if you know well, how to draft, it's not a damn problem. So you better know how to draft. That's, 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 that's I mean, the whole, the whole – and even yeah, the number if one you pick. keep Garland or Mitchell, you don't know what's going to happen. Maybe one of them gets season-ending injury. They're done. They're not good anymore. I mean, I mean that's always you never know what's going to happen. You have to know. It's, I mean, it's a game of risks if you really think about but it. But if you have five first-rounders, you'd hope at least two of them can pan out pretty damn well. Yeah. That's less than half of them. And I mean, not to mention, like who everybody's dream, everybody's golden boy right now, Anthony Edwards, playing Reed. great. But like, this is what last year was the first year they made uh, the playoffs. And like, who do they have yet? They got Rudy Gobert, who's now a five-time defensive player of the year. They have uh-huh. Conalty Edwards. They how many times was he an All Star? He can shoot the three ball. He's seven foot tall. Like Mike Conley, one of the most underrated players. Like, you gotta put a damn pretty good. It's not. Like, it's not like Anthony Edwards has some big time stinkers. Not like he's been carrying this show. Like. Let's go build a right basketball team. And Darius Garland, we're talking about number one guys. They also got Anthony Edwards. I, I don't yeah, get this parallel. I, well, and that's what I'm saying. So if you give Darius Garland the right situation in two more years, I'm not saying he'll be an Anthony Edwards, but I'm saying, okay, like, he'd certainly be the guy for your team. It's so much recency bias. Like, it's absurd. I don't – I even when he was on his own, I didn't think he would ever be the number he one. He was amazing. He has developed. He has Evan Mobley, who's all developed. He was developed. developing. He has stopped developing. I, I don't think he has developed. That's the thing. That's he the was developing. He was yeah. developing until they got trending like this. He went down. He went I, down, I, if I anything. Totally and two of the dominant black hole, that would have been helpful if he was a little bit more of a, a sharing the ball type of guy. And like this well, running an offense where you have screens and off the ball movement, which we've talked about this. I don't know how much is JB Bigger said, how much is Donovan. But the problem is when Donovan was out, all of a sudden the offense was that much more fluid. Well, here's the thing. I don't think it's Donovan's fault that Darius Garland regressed. I think it just 
I think it happened because oh, well, maybe it is. I think it's a mix of it, Donovan but, and Bickerstaff not knowing how to make it work. I I agree because Mike Conley was good in Utah. He was an All Star in Utah. Yeah, you know, and he played next to Donovan. I think it is kind of just they just kind of threw this roster together with a coach, and we should talk about that. He might get fired. Um, I don't think he will. He should. I think he will. People, and I don't know people, he, the people, people, are, people in the Cavs and the Cavs uh, organization like him a lot. I, I think there, I thought people in the Cavs organization they like him. I think there was a lot of like locker room problems with that roster. Because we'll have to see what happens. Yeah, I guess we'll see. But I, I think that is Cavs the, have big things coming in their offseason. They got to figure out a lot of things. And, I mean, if they did have locker room problems, I think it's an even bigger issue because I feel like bigger staff. What his strength is is like. Personality, uh, like I think the reason why I would fire him is the X's and O's. But if yeah. there's locker room problems too, like definitely get him out of there. Yeah. Also, the roster case isn't boring. No, it wasn't. It, it like we said, I I, think it was they they the kind guys. of fucked themselves by trading for Donovan two years ago. I still think the thing could have gone. I think the roster would would have, could have been fine. I mean, depending on player, I, I think they would have still ran into some of the same problems with like. Alan Mobley, obviously. Yeah, but again, um, like, again we talk about six man. If you can get a guy coming off the bench, if you can get commit to different roles, I can imagine Darius Garland with Larry Markkinen and Evan Mobley. I mean, it's not guaranteed. Larry, Larry Markkinen. Yeah, Larry true. Markkinen. But I know. I mean, that that'd be nice. True. Get what about? Be nice. No. <laughs> I was going to say Donald Mitchell for Larry Markkinen. Two point. I don't think the Jazz would do that. I don't think they want Donovan back yeah. at all. I mean, the Jazz have been rumored to want to be aggressive this offseason. Let's see what they do not own their first round pick. We'll see what that means. Yeah. Anyway, are we done, Mister Host? Anything uh, else? Unless y'all have anything else to add on, or I have another Don Mitchell trade, but I don't know. It may be it may be gone too long. So, what team is it with? It's the Rockets. I want to hear this. Okay, I'll, I'll be quick. It is. It's a lot, um, but the Rockets have a lot to give. So it's Dylan Brooks, um, which I know you guys love Dylan. Brooks. Uh, he's my favorite player. In yeah, uh, Jalen Green, uh, the third pick. Done this year's pick. Yes. Um, so Dylan Brooks, you get a, another wing defender. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think Okoro's a guaranteed guy that's like a shoe in a comeback. Um, I mean, I think a team's player. going to pay. Depends um, on the Cavs value of him too, because they did kind of run him like no minutes in the playoffs. Yeah, I, I think a so, team's going it's to very possible. give him a lot of minutes. I thought he was good when he played. Uh, he was, um, but he just like stopped getting minutes. Like if you're like, even if you're like San Antonio. You need three Ooh. defense back. Three and D, that's your core. Like that's a great idea. I never thought about that. A core of three and D. Of those episodes. <laughs> Damn, and, bro, just dissed him hard. Uh, well, so Jalen, and then Jalen Green. I like, there's, I don't know how much I'm buying into that jump that he made because he kind of does that every year where he like goes off in April. Uh, in April and, Have like, you ever had a table set with Darius Darius Garland? The guy that grabs it, that takes defense I mean, away Fredman, while like, giving year. the ball. I mean, he's not the same as Darius Garland. He's, he's not much of like a, as a scorer. He's not as much of a pull. Well, yeah, but I, I, I mean, I, yeah, he's yeah. on the league. I like this trade a lot, actually, for both teams. And then, like the third pick, um, just to like advance, advance it. I mean, third pick is I like this draft is not as valuable. Be a Risa Shea, whatever his name is. Yeah, Zachary Risa. Oh, baby. <laughs> Although I think Risa Shea may go one. He could. I just like depending on, like, it. Yeah, I might. I, I would maybe there needs to be maybe another pick, second, fourth round, maybe another pick in this. Actually, trade. in this, I have another first, but like the more I think about it, it's just a lot. It's just the maybe. Yeah, maybe I would almost prefer the other pick then from from twenty twenty five first round instead of this year, because mm-hmm. I feel like a third. Let's say like Ricochet yeah. and Star are probably both gone. Klingon, you don't want Klingon if you're the Chavs. You don't, you don't even want Dylan and him. Reed Shepard. I think Reed Shepard could be nice. Like but you're still getting Jalen Green. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe you want... Bruzelis? I don't know. No. 
No, why would they want Buzelos? I mean, they could. But Buzelos they have Mobley and Allen. Yeah, well, Mobley or Allen. theoretically, Mal- Malin. Allen Mal- would be on his way out. Um, I guess. This, I this is a much... I like this one. This one's not bad at all. And then if you're the Rockets, and you're going... Oh, like, they want to go all in, I guess? Or they want to just, like... I don't know what the Rockets want to do. Like, I, Don't ask me. what the Rockets are just, like... Let's run it back. We had a good year. We got young guys. And you have Brandon Donovan. Um, and then you're you're trading Dylan Brooks. You're opening up those minutes for Cam Whitmore, Tari Eason. Cam yeah, Whitmore. Uh, even M.N. Thompson. True. I like getting more competitive while still being able to use your young guys. Yeah. More. I mean, it's an interesting one. I'm not much of a Rockets fan. One of the few teams I'm not a fan of. I, I, I despise the Rockets. <laughs> Man, look at us now. Look at you guys teaming up now. Vibe switch. <laughs> yeah. I think it's all the calf stock we have for oh, today. Really? That was a lot of calf stock. And, and calf a rocket stock. Oh, I'm sorry, you calf stock. Um, so, well, that's the end of uh, the calves trade talks. Uh, like the video, subscribe. I'll see you next time.